Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Uh, we're going to move to our next presenter. I'll invite uh, my colleague Blair to the stage. Um, Blair is the director of alliances at Talus, and he's going to spend some time this afternoon talking about uh, building your PQC lab. Uh, Blair has 30 plus years of IT and cybersecurity, sales channel marketing, and business development experience. Uh, Blair's now been back with Talus since September 2019 and is uh, participating in the, uh, with the Global Technology Alliances team, which includes the quantum cryptography portfolio. Uh, Blair is an avid presenter, startup consultant, and ID industry co contributor. Welcome, Blair. Take it away. All right. Test, test, check, check. Synergy. Are all my Talus colleagues here? That's the only thing that matters if they show up to my stuff. Good to see you guys. Thank you. And it's tough to follow Lori, and it's nice to see you. And it's nice to see a lot of you and familiar faces. Um, to Greg's point, I've been doing this a long time, not just in post-quantum, because as, as you can imagine, I'm not Michaela Mosca doing this for the last 20 years, so I'm a student at the same time as I'm learning uh, that my previous uh, and now current years in PKI have come together at the same time. So for those who don't know me, um, just a quick background, I started my career with a little company called Symantec um, and, and did this thing called antivirus. You guys remember that? Uh, why that matters is because we were accused at the time of creating uh, our own viruses so we could sell more antivirus technology. And I used to remind people that, you know, police don't commit their own crimes and firemen don't set their own fires just to retain their job. And it's not about job security. The same thing is kind of ebbing into PQC. Are we creating something in terms of hype so that we can solve the problem? So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what I think today. It's my opinion, but I'm also grabbing and t leveraging a lot of what my colleagues are saying and demonstrating and physically doing in real time. So with further ado, without further ado, I'll look at the screen. I'm going to talk a little bit about today about not just a PQC lab that everybody should have the identical look and feel to, but it's more and more in the discussions with our customers, with our partners is... I get, and to Lori's points, I'm going to leverage what she said. I wish I'd seen your slide deck before I got up here because I could probably glean a whole lot from that. But from what we're seeing in the industry is that some organizations are a bit fearful of starting something and when do they start something. They're also fearful of the hype curve. And I don't know if you've all seen this in, in your travels or in your experience, but I see almost 50% or more of the organizations we're talking to or people that I talk to that are kicking the can down the hall. Uh, meaning, it's not going to be around for another 10 years. Why are you guys talking about this? Why do I have to do anything now? Because quantum computers aren't even here yet. And you know what? They're, they're going to need 13 to 15 million qubits. And you heard presentations and discussions about uh, what that means to have a qubit versus uh, the, the noisy qubits and logical qubits. But it gets lost in the noise because what really comes down to is organizations are struggling to ascertain, is this real and what do I need to do? I, I hope I illuminate maybe some of those comments. More importantly, got to start off with a joke. I'm Canadian. We have a sense of humor because we have winter. So if you want to see the... Anyone? See, my wife thought this was horrible, and I said, this joke kills in these kind of... So... Uh, what I'm basically putting out there is that there's a lot of hype, but there's a lot of misinformation. So hopefully, you know, sorting through that stuff will help a little bit. Um, I don't need to do a lot of show of hands, but I guarantee every person in this room is involved in some POC, some lab, some testing, some experience that, that, that lends to this conversation. Uh, whether it's a tabletop ex exercise, whether it's a, a, a consulting organization coming in doing two or three day workshops, I, I'm not going to break it down into individual components. But what I'm going to talk a little bit about today is maybe maybe more importantly, what some of the customers out there um, and, and large enterprises are, are telling us and telling me firsthand and why we're doing what we're doing. First of all, is there a problem? The answer is 
yeah, there's a problem that all of us are talking about, but there's more importantly, acknowledgement that the problem's getting a little closer. Maybe too close for comfort. Maybe those near misses, the one comment about the LinkedIn thing that happened this past week, we all saw that. We all kicked it around and said, hey, is this real, is this not real? My concern with those sorts of things, it doesn't help. It doesn't help because it generates false hype, fake news. And what I'm really focused on is the rationale that every single person in this room understands, which is standards bodies are here. We've got a lot of smart people in the room that could you know, weed through that and understandably give an organization or our colleagues comfort that we're looking at the problem head on and that we're solving the problem head on. So Dr. Mosca has been referenced many, many times. Um, for those who don't know Dr. Mosca, Michaela, um, Michaela and I share a common bond. We both are University of Waterloo grads. The difference is that he is a PhD in quantum physics and I don't. So when I reference him, it's not like we're peers in the same discussion points, but I am a layman to this, but I'm also, that's my job, is to laymanize a lot of the hype, a lot of the technology, and I work with a lot of the people in this room on an ongoing basis as partners and as, as confidants, as well as, as Lori's pointed out, we're talking to the same people, could we at least get the song sheet straight? I don't mean that we all have to be identical in our responses, but can we at least acknowledge that maybe you need to tune your message a little bit. Maybe you need to adapt a little bit to the changes that are coming. And by the way, it's coming. So I know that Dustin and all sorts of other folks have put these up in front of you, so I won't belabor this. But I am using the same reference points, and they're more relevant than ever. This one in particular from Dr. Mosca. I think we've all seen this. In fact, I'll drop his name again because I had uh, coffee with him in Ottawa on Monday. And one of the best things that he said, or one of the most relevant things he said to me was, there, we don't have 20 years to prepare, prepare for this. But think about that. That's his life's work. 20 past years at the Quantum Institute, University of Waterloo. We know all the other names, Dr. David Zhao. We know all the cryptographers that are circling around this. But that's a really relevant, we don't have 20 years. So let's get this together, and that's again the event horizon that we're all wondering. By the way, it's not like Y2Q, this isn't going to be necessarily an announcement that we all get together once that event horizon happens. It could happen completely and obscurely to all of us until somebody finds out it then, it then becomes a national, if not a world event. A lot of things happening. I, by the way, my... I, I have glasses to see you, but then I have to take my glasses off to read my notes, so maybe I'm better to just look behind me. So I had to make some changes. I kind of like the old names for the for the, for the uh, Dilithium and Sphinx and Kyber and Falcon because I could remember them, so now I've got to rename and remember them all. Uh, so I've thrown that in the slide. Dustin, is that your fault or is that? Okay, so it's Dustin's fault if anybody d d you know got used to the old names. And for those who, are in, in, who have family members, and I would mention Dilithium, they said, oh, isn't that cute? You guys are Star Wars fans. And I went, Star Trek. So for those who are really into that sort of stuff. But um, one of the things that obviously that we're going through in, in, in our, is our company and a lot of companies out there is what, where are we at? Um, I wish I had 10 more years on that graph to show you where we're going to be. We don't have that luxury. We already heard from ANSI. We've obviously heard from BSI. We all know where all this information is coming from. And guess what? I'm starting to, to see a refined message. I didn't say unanimity. It doesn't mean that we all have to agree. Agreement is good if, if it's the right answer. But we're all coming together in some respects and figuring this out in real time. Now, this one I leverage and I, I acknowledge it because as a Canadian and working in the PQC working group with, uh, with Dr. Mosca and others with large telcos, uh, we have a dilemma, which is, what do we do in Canada? Now, I'm can Canadian, so I can say things like, Pearson Airport really sucks. Um, I can say, our winters are really long and cold. Now, if anybody else says that about Canada, I get a little bit offended. Okay? It's my winter, and it's my airport. How dare you? But the same thing applies to, what are we doing from a crypto point of view, or a PQC point of view in Canada? Why are Canadians not stepping in, stepping out, leaning into this? We typically have not been that kind of a nation. And for those who've been in the room long enough to know, and Entrust folks, in my days working with Entrust back in the 90s, we had to do a lot of stuff 
leaning in, but we also have to follow what the U.S. is doing from a FIPS validation point of view, from a NIST point of view. And there's nothing wrong with that if we believe in what this is, where it's heading. I believe very strongly that the U.S. government changing one word from should to shall really makes a difference for organizations. And for those who are trying to get behind crypto discovery, those who are trying to get things, their, their house in order, I suggested to the Canadian government, we should follow, but we should just follow in step. We, we can acknowledge that this makes sense, and if it does, let's adapt, let's adopt, and let's go. And that's what we're going to do. So the Canadian Forum for Internet Digital Resiliency, I didn't make up the acronym, made this comment that we will lean into PQC, and we will be with the rest of the world in step. Again, CNSA, lots of discussion about this. Obviously, not just the algorithms, but the implementation of said algorithms as it relates to the use cases that Lori and others have pointed out. PKI is one thing, but what about code signing? A lot of people in this room are shifting in their chairs when you see how we're going to adapt to and embed PQC as it relates to firmware code signing over the next couple of years. Um, the dotted lines, the solid lines, am I here to debate that they're going to change or they're going to evolve or they're going to shift to the right? Um, or are they going to shift to the left? This is a real dilemma. We don't have the crystal ball to tell you when this needs to, but this is his best guess. Sorry. Forgot to put that up. That's what I'm talking about. We've all seen this a hundred times, but look at it. The yellow dotted areas or the jag or whatever you call it, uh, were there as of June of this year. We're supposed to. And by the way, Talus is no different. We have lots of divisions that build things like satellites that go into space. And we're the world's largest smart card manufacturer. We kind of got to make those smart cards safe for all transactions. We make passports. We make defense ends. We put in-flight systems into the air for Emirates and, and Boeing and you name it. We got a lot of, lot of uh, contingencies within, within Talos. We have to eat our own. We have to consume our own. So we're, we're talking not just from a cyber point of view, but from a worldwide presence point of view. We're no different. We're consumers of this just as much as, as our customers. I'm going to flip through this because you all know how this stuff works. Let's get to this. Where do we start? Number one, don't freak out. Don't panic. Um, I would, I would say in the last year, the number of PQC-related conversations has gone up a thousand percent. There's several people in the room that, that are here today that I've done webinars with, and we've seen the uptick. It's unbelievable. And the conversations are shifting from, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, we gotta get under, we got to get this under control, especially the telcos. So I don't know if you know, but in Canada, we kind of suffered a little gaffe where we lost Rogers for a couple of days you realize that we have one line from coast to coast, one line of fiber. That's not resilient. That doesn't make sense. Where's the backup? He was supposed to fail over to Bell. Bell just looked at Rogers, Rogers just looked at Bell, and all Canadians just said, what the hell? I thought we were all paying for that. Those things weren't in place. So we don't need a two-day outage to prove the point, and a post-quantum's coming. So that is now no longer an option. They have to get behind this. And I hope I was excuse me. I hope I separate the two elements a little bit uh, when I talk here. If I'm not, I'll do, try and do a better job. Is the symmetric issue a problem right this minute? No. Asymmetric. The PKI, the TLS, the front end, all the session management, all the stuff, the plumbing and wiring that not many of us care much about. How many in this room explain to their friends and family what the lock on their browser represents? See, nerds, I do too. But when I explained that a gentleman by the name of Dr. Argumel was the guy behind that, and I know Avesta, you know, you know Taher, for a lot of us who knew Taher, I worked with him for a few years, um, explaining that that session is there to secure your browser, to secure your, you know, your interaction on the internet. Most of us, again, we, we don't pay attention to this, we don't care, we knew that. But for those who don't, do you realize that if we don't have that solved going forward, how much of we rely on crypto it is everywhere. We're the two nerds in the basement, like in Spies Like Us, that get brought upstairs 
This is exactly where we're at from a cryptography point of view. You know, enjoy your time. Uh, but we're more relevant than ever. And that's what this is happening in real time. Oh, sorry. You gotta go back. One of the things I wanted to just highlight is your PQC project planning. At a very high level, and I really wish I'd seen your slides, Lori, because I, I incorporate the GSMA, quote, best practices and white papers into every conversation. I bring to bear all sorts of other really well-written white papers that organizations put a lot of effort behind. It's tough to, to isolate or it's tough to wean it down to a certain number, but there's some really fantastic already done best practices and so on that we're introducing if for the first time or we're just absorbing into a conversation that we're having with our customers. And I think this goes for the room. You, you want to take what's already been vetted and you want to take that to the organizations that have also vetted it. And if you feel comfortable, then let's not reinvent that wheel. I think a lot of companies are going to start spitting out best practices this and PQC that and so and so. But there's some really good stuff that from a provenance point of view, I'm going to leverage the stuff that I already have. Um, one of the big things is get your budget in order. Now I'm going to have to quickly go through this because I want to get to the meat of, the, of this. How am I doing for time? I'm going to be able to do this. Okay. Uh, risk cases, use cases vary. Um, if, if we're talking to a defense contractor, that's one. If you're talking to a telco, that's another. If you're talking to a bank, completely something else. Um, so the risk profiles vary depending on the organization, but the same elements horizontally apply. We understand that crypto is everywhere. And there's a lot of great organizations that are going to help you discover where those crypto assets are in real time as well as ongoing. And it's going to evolve. It's going to change. So it's not like done, one and done. So I know Vesta and others in the room that know all about crypto discovery will tell you that the presumption, assumption was that I've already got that. Because all my devices use this, that, or otherwise. Yeah, but do you understand that the provenance of your PKI certificates? Did you actually look at those? No. Yeah. Maybe they're in a spreadsheet somewhere, or they're 20 years ago. I, I don't know. Somebody else did that. Look at that stuff. This is what's coming up right now, is you're getting your house in order. And it's not a bad thing. And it's going to happen. Yeah, uh, I, we all have competition. But sometimes we just have to collaborate. Some people think that you know, Talos and Entrust compete. Yeah, we do, but we also have 250 customers together over 20 plus years, I know. I sold Swift their first box. I sold Entrust their first box. And I sold Digicert their first box. So I go back a little ways to the beginning of HSMs, and we've been working together for a long time, and we'll continue to work together. And in this particular scenario, this is not the time for us to get our elbows up. This is a time for us to collaborate. And nobody's going to go out there with a proprietary solution so they can beat the competition to the door. This is about going forward with standards, implemented correctly, and yes, over time, competition will vary. How we optimize for those algorithms in those boxes across the software st stacks within firmware. That's proprietary because you're going to try and do the best you possibly can to make your car faster. You know, more efficient, more what have you. But in the term of the next few years, we've got a lot more important things to worry about than our competition. I think I forgot to put up one really important thing with standards bodies. And I realize my slides are a little delinquent. GSMA. So I want to shout out again um, how important it is that we work with those types of organizations. And I'm really glad that we, we've met this year because it's, it's opened up dialogues in places that we otherwise wouldn't have known about. And that vetting is not just technologies, it's individuals. It's working with people who are like-minded, pragmatic, respectful. I think we're all those things. Um, but in real time, we're, we're, you know the name dropping it happens. We all do it. But I'm, I'm especially proud of the consortium that we've put together, especially with PKI consortium, especially with um, you know, things like X9, with NCCOE because everybody's held to account. So important that we, we, we leverage that. It's a marathon. I know you're tired. It's going to be a long time. I might retire before this whole thing really, truly comes to bear. I know, I look 30, but I'm not. Um, but uh, how many of you are in your first 10 years of your career in this room, just out of curiosity? There's a couple. How about your second 
decade. Third, whoa, maybe we won't be allowed. Oh, should I have said fourth? <laughs> the reason I bring that up is you might think that you're not necessary in terms of crypto. You know how hard it is to find good crypto people. I think we're all going to be gained from the employee for a little while longer, and we're probably going to be asked to stay on for maybe just a couple more years because we're, we're just trying to get the next generation into what was like arguably crypto. Who the heck cares about that? A lot of things are happening in real time. Uh, quantum risk assessment, good points made by Lori and others. Uh, lots of tools out there. Um, we have one, lots of consulting organizations have one. This, these are parts and elements of your PPC lab that we're gonna talk about. So, I'm gonna talk about this little company. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Wells Fargo, uh, you should be. Uh, being Canadian, I've never used their bank. At least I don't think I have, even an ATM. But um, a lot of money transfers between all the banks all over the world. So guess what? We're all, we're all Wells Fargo customers. I'm going to talk about what they're doing. Uh, this is something I can talk publicly about. These are slides that are available uh, to you. This, is, uh, this came about from some of the work we're doing, some of the partners in this room. And how this came about is that this organization, unbeknownst to me, already carried 22 post-quantum patents, leading, I think, the world, if not close to it. I know I'm probably way off on that number for some, but I believe that Talos has four or five, last I looked. So relevance-wise, there's organizations out there that are spending a lot of time in this, this problem area. Their particular challenge has been acknowledged by their senior leadership and management, such that, such that in 2024, this remains in their top three IT priorities. Wow, I really got to pick it up. Let's get to the stuff that, that I think most people are wondering. How do you start? Current state. Assess what you have. It takes time. It's, by the way, that assessment will continue. That starts, but it continues on, just as you would do data discovery. Crypto discovery is the same thing. SharePoint instances under the desk, an example of, you know, as, as it proliferates through an organization, when they went back and found out how much SharePoint they were running, wouldn't you be surprised to find out there's a lot of crypto under the desk too? Your hashing implementations, DevSecOps, secrets management, all that stuff. And what they want to do is get to a state that they're poised and ready. So how are they going to do that? Well, they're leveraging those, those standards bodies, those organizations. They're also making sure that anybody that's part of this is vetted. And I want to get to the slide I think that really matters. Oh, I thought I had it up here. Maybe I moved it. Hang on. Let's get to the last slide because I want to wrap up here. Sorry, everybody. I thought I was a much better time manager than this. So nope. I must have put the wrong slide in there. One of the things they wanted to do was, let's go back one slide here. I'm a little surprised that I don't have that in there. Bear with me. Okay. Stop. So this is the trust but verify. So it's easy to talk about vetting. But what they're doing in real time is they're bringing very slowly and very methodically organizations and technologies in to address the use cases of PKI, of TLS. QKD has been pushed over to the right just for the moment. And we've heard lots of discussion and debate about QKD. They're no different. But the first order of business is in order for us to be ready for the onslaught of what have you over the next few years, they want to be able to determine what the ecosystem is going to be to get them there, which includes consulting, technologies, uh, vendor scrutiny, and attestation from outside organizations like the big five that are going to come in and say, we agree with that. Is it an audit? At this point, it's more recommendations, of course, best practices. But over time, all those things evolve, including the audits. As we all know, SAS 70 audits from days before, any of my PKI friends in the room remember all those things that were necessary for root ceremonies. Those things will come into, into play over time. So I think that's a good way to, sorry, that's a good way to just finish up here and open it up if we have a couple minutes for uh, any questions.
Anyone in the room want to throw one at me? Maybe less hard than Lori. Thanks, Lori. Please. So you're saying the opposite, apathy. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Uh, I, yes, I'd be happy to. Is there a more balanced approach to getting turning apathy into action? Would that be a good way to summarize your question? As organizations are not necessarily addressing it head on, so my response is uh, is firsthand. So I have seen a one thousand percent increase in uh, in responsiveness as well as reaching out, uh, which say a year year and a half ago. I was on the many conversations that were completely, to your point, apathetic. 12 people in a room, one person shaking their head, and then the other 11 people going, awesome, I don't have to worry about this. And so it's now shifted to, we recognize we have a problem, and in real time. So I'm, for example, last week, I had five calls, and probably close to 30 emails. It's gone up exponentially in terms of, and specifically telcos where they're looking at us and saying, could you bring in a few more trusted advisors to give us, because you guys seem to have a fundamental uh, uh, appreciation for the problem. We're starting to see it, it's evolving. So I believe that what I said at the beginning is, the hype curve is slowly adjusting, it takes time. Unfortunately, I don't think we have the luxury of a compromise like you would get in the other businesses, which is ransomware is real, antivirus virus is real. Um, Denial of service, real. Quantum is very ambiguous. So this is the other problem, is we are generally show it to me or I'll believe it when I see it. That's human nature. And we're starting to see a more pragmatic, responsible approach. And it's a lot of work from people in this room making that happen. I will also share with you quickly to answer that question. The number of people attending webinars, up hundreds and hundreds of percent. So there's something going on. I, I'm sure my colleagues will attest that PQC is kind of a hot topic, buzzworthy right now. I think we have time for one more question. Is there anyone in the room for a question for Blair? Nope. Well, I'll ask the last question. You know, on one of your slides, you had to uh, identify your budget. Um, right. I think that's one of the barriers I see right now is organizations just say, I understand the problem, I get it, you've convinced me, I have no money. Any insight into how organizations can uh, work towards funding? That's a great question. Um, one of the things I've seen is, is, is budget shifting. Absolutely, to the case in Wells Fargo, they were concerned they were gonna lose their money because, well, I still haven't seen any, any compromises yet, guys. What are we talking about? They, they have a, a very concise approach to justification for budget. I think once you do a little bit more discovery, um, even as a, a segment of the organization, uh, we're starting to see the likes of you know Sandbox and others, um, and all sorts of vendors. I don't want to point one out, but all sorts of great vendors out there shining a light on it, coming back with some sort of an assessment, defining the problem at least as a subset, going to the senior leadership. And by the way, the left referenceability between leaders is is starting to take hold. Just like we in, in the early days of PKI, what was it? It wasn't until the major banks and governments got together and started having an exchange that they realized, hey, we probably need to do this. And I'm starting to see a lot of that now. And also, how do I get my budget? I don't have a how-to booklet handy, but I do, I, I do think we can take that, that question offline and, and, and certainly noodle it out a little bit. Great, well, thank you very much, Blair. Thank you, Lori. Great way to finish the day. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.